Stitchers, welcome back to my channel and welcome to the first installment of my August 2021 stitching vlog. My name is Christine and I'm happy to have you along with me today. It's already August 5th, Thursday, August 5th, and I realized I haven't done my first, the first part of my vlog yet. So I wanted to get started and just talk a little bit about my plans or lack thereof that I have for going into August. Um, I wanted to show you, if you watched my July vlog, you saw that I stitched this pretzel and I said the only thing I needed to do is add the hanger onto it. So I did want to show that I added the little hanging, the little bead hanger on that. Right there, if you can see, let's get that to focus, just with the extra beads. And I still have to add some felt onto the back. So maybe in August I'll get that done. So anyway pretzel again that's the Mill Hill kit called pretzel okay so uh, what else have I done so far you also saw that let me move this out of the way that I was working on this last month and I had a little bit of the background that I had to do and I knew I was going to finish that up really pretty quickly um, after filming that last video and I did I finished that and then I went ahead and did all of the back stitching and uh, I did start some of the beading because this color that I was using for some of this back stitching, they could say go ahead and do, you know, the orange beads in that area while you're at it. So I just got a couple of the beads done, the eyes in the cat and the jack-o'-lantern right there. So my goal for sure, did I miss a stitch? Yeah. Every time I film, I can see it sticks out like a sore thumb. I missed a cross on that stitch right there. Let's see while I'm at it if there's any other ones missing. Okay, so far so good. Okay, so yes, I'm going to go into the beading on this one. That is one of my plans so far uh, for August is to do that and get that one done. Now, I was, uh, I finished this up last night and I didn't, I was just stitching in my bed and so I didn't want to start I did I only was tedious enough just doing those few beads and then um, I didn't want to do any more though because I need to sit kind of at a better stitching spot when I'm doing my beads so I wanted to start something else while I was just in my sitting in my bed watching Supernatural my husband and I are watching re-watching that we watched it years ago when it was on but we didn't finish watching it I think we only got through like maybe I don't know five or six seasons but it has so many more seasons, we decided to rewatch that again. So we watched that in the evenings. And uh, I was sitting there thinking, well, I need to just get started on something I can do while I'm watching TV. So I grabbed this one. This is one of the new 2021 kits, uh, the Autumn Harvest kits called Fall Fun. And um, yeah, I just thought I would take that one out and sort the floss. So I did that didn't actually put the little, uh, I didn't draw my little labels on there yet, but I went ahead and sorted out the floss and that one's all ready to go. So I'll start that at some point. Um, but yeah, I want to get the beading done on this. And so far that's the only plan I really have. And yes, these Altoid tins, just in case you're new to my channel, I do not have this, these in here for fresh breath. That is not what this is. <laughs> this is where I keep my beads. And if you've seen any of my past videos, you know that I just took some of that bead cloth that you can buy and I cut a little piece and I keep it in a little Altoid tin. And how long now I've been saying that I love to, um, what is it called, alter the tins and, you know, make them look like cute little stitching things. And I keep meaning to make one stitch, a, a like a, a cross stitch topping on this that says beads and, you know, finish this so it looks like a proper little bead container instead of just Altoids. But Hence, I haven't done that yet, and uh, I just add it to the list of things to do, but hey, maybe I'll get that done in August. It's been a while since I've done an altered tin, and yeah, it would be really nice to have a bead tin that actually says beads on it instead of Altoids. Okay, so that is pretty much um, all I have to show you so far for this first installment. And I started thinking about my August plans, and I'm really struggling. I'm struggling because nothing's jumping out at me as to specifically what I want to stitch. Now, the problem I'm having, let me give you something here better to look at than an Altoid tin. Let's look at that. 
Uh, so the problem I'm having, it's the opposite of losing my stitchy bug. The problem I'm having is that every single thing that I look at in my collection of cross stitch projects, I want to stitch. I want to stitch them all. If I look through my whip pile, I want to stitch them all. If I look through what I haven't started yet, I want to stitch them all. So what do you do when you want to stitch everything? And I'm not really, I don't, I'm not really a big fan of just stitching on something for one day and then putting it away. So I kind of have to think really, I have to really give it some thought because I, I have a feeling that I'm in the mood to stay with kind of one project. So how do you choose which one to work on? Do I start something new? Do I just, you know, get the, you know, the random wheel app on my phone and just say, okay, these are all of my projects, all of my whips, all of my new projects, all my new kits, and just spin and let the wheel do it? I should really do that because I just can't decide. I can't decide. So other than finishing this one, you know, do I want to start a new mill hill? Do I want to finish some of the ones I started last fall? I just don't know. I'm so, st I'm struggling. Do I work on a project for a week and then go? I do not know. So what I'm going to say is you're just going to have to stay tuned and uh, we'll see probably by the next clip what I decide to do. I'm, I'm kind of thinking of, unless something just jumps out and says, you have to stitch me, I'm going to probably do the random wheel and just uh, let the universe pick what I should be working on, what it thinks I should be working on. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm happy to have you here. And uh, we'll see what August holds. All right, see you in the next clip. Later this same day, and I'm going through my kits, and you know you have a lot of stuff when you forget that you bought something. So this is, I'm, I'm very new to Riolis kits. I think I have the Riolis Blue Jay kit that I showed in a previous video, but I haven't started that yet. But I did buy this one earlier on. This is the first year that I've grown Cosmos in my garden. And I really think they're so pretty. Uh, the ones I have, I'll insert a picture of the, actually the very first bloom that I got. It's kind of a, a variegated, the edges on it are darker, but so pretty. So I'm kind of thinking I feel like starting this because I've never done a realist kit before. I was gonna wait and start my Blue Jay, the realist Blue Jay kit as my first one, but I don't know, this one, this one's just kind of calling for me. So let's see, um, oh, we can't see what's inside of it. Let me open it up and then we'll look at the floss and uh, decide if we want to get, decide if I want to start it. I always refer to us as we, but yes, it will be me starting it unless you happen to have this kit in your uh, collection and then you can start it with me, feel free. But let me pause it while I get this opened up. All right, they used some really strong glue on this bag so I pretty much had to obliterate the bag. Okay, well, let's see what's in it. So it comes with this little, make sure that's the chart on that side. Ooh, that's interesting. It's a nice color chart. Let me just show you a little glimpse of it right there. You can see it's a, a color chart, which I do like that. I know a lot of people don't like the color charts, but I happen to like them. Sometimes I can get away without even marking my stitches off. And what is this? Oh, a why we use wool, okay. So this is, um, I forgot that they have these uh, wool threads. Okay, I have never used these. I've never used this uh, wool type of thread. Ooh, interesting, it looks awfully uh, fuzzy. It's kind of fuzzy and thin, and I don't know if you're supposed to use one strand or two strands. I'm definitely gonna have to read. But look at these pretty colors, ooh, oh. I love these colors. All right. Uh, let me see. Oh, I won't, won't read this whole thing. Um, let me just pause it, then I'll give you the uh, Reader's Digest version of it. Okay, so I guess basically the, the most important part of it is that it's, it's a wool acrylic blend. So it's 70% acrylic, 30% wool and it makes it more resistant to abrasion, better preserves the color, and are less allergenic. So, okay, interesting. It says it's really easy to stitch with, too. Okay, I'm excited. Let's look at the fabric. What does it come with? Uh, this looks to me like a very stiff Ada. 
and I'm guessing that looks like an 18 count. I could probably look and see. And then there is a needle tucked in right there too. So yeah, looks like 18 count. And uh, so the orange means it's Zweigert. I, Zweigart, I don't, uh, I do know that. And let me see, got some instructions here uh, in all different languages. And uh, there's English. So yes, it's just got some instructions right there, like most kits do. And let me see where it says for sure what kind of... I'll let you look at those really pretty colors. Well, actually, I'll set it on top of the fabric so we can see how they're going to look on the fabric. going to look very pretty. Yeah, that Ada looks a lot like the kind of Ada that I love to stitch on the uh, oatmeal. Um, Fiddler's Ada. Okay, this is, oh, okay, it says it contains a 16 count flaxen fabric. That's just what it's called, 16 count flaxen, but it's definitely an Ada. Okay. Yep. I don't know. Now that I've opened this up, I think I'm going to at least get it started. So I'll check back with you and uh, show you how it looks after I get a few stitches in. Okay, talk to you soon. Okay, it's been a few minutes. I went and got a hoop and grabbed my scissors and uh, found the center of my fabric and started stitching right away. So I'm going to, uh, this is my thoughts so far on the acrylic wool thread. So you do use two strands. And I love the coverage. It's nice and fluffy and beautiful coverage. And it seems like the stitches just kind of naturally want to lay nice. My only concern is that this Ada fabric is really rough, so the holes are real rough. And it only takes just going, pulling the thread through the holes just a few times, and I can visibly start to see them get quite fuzzy. Um, and you can see I left the, this is the, the, uh, I just finished stitching this color and I used just a short piece of um, thread just to do those few stitches. And if you look right here, see it's already starting to sort of fray and come apart at the ends. So um, I don't like that part of it just because it's going to mean that I'm going to need to use probably smaller lengths of floss so that, uh, I mean, it gets really raggedy pretty quick. I mean, I just didn't even do that many stitches. So I do. I might think about using some thread conditioner. I'll have to read and see if that's okay to use on the acrylic wool. Um, but, it, you know, I would prefer to be able to stitch with some longer pieces. But then again, this pattern doesn't really have a lot of... Let me grab the cover again. So this pattern doesn't really have a lot of... I mean, I guess maybe in the greenery you do do quite a bit of one color. But right now, I think what I'm working on right now is this little center right here. And yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of little pieces of color here and there and here and there. You can use short strands of floss. But other than that, I really think the coverage is really pretty. And I like how even when you do start to use it and it gets kind of fuzzy, it sort of adds really a nice texture to the stitches. And I think maybe that, you know, kind of adds to the charm. So, all right, uh, we'll see. I'm going to continue on with this. Uh, it's getting to be dusk right now, so I'll probably have to move inside. And I, I don't know how much I'll get to work on it more this evening or before I check in with you again. But I will definitely check in and show you my progress on that and give you my thought on the floss and how it is to work with longer, you know, longer strands, how quickly it becomes raggedy. I mean, you can almost see... You know, you can't see very well, but you can kind of see that the individual strands are even kind of starting to untwist or unravel a little bit. You know, and I really only did a few stitches with it before it started looking like that. So, yeah, it's going to be maybe a bit of a challenge stitching this if I have to use such short strands of thread. It's almost like I'm using a, you know, um, kind of like when you use uh, floss that has you know, the specialty floss that has the glitter and stuff in it, you know, you have to just use shorter strands and yeah, and I'm sure if I was using a 
fabric that didn't have such rough holes it would probably uh, last the you, you can probably use longer strands but this stuff I can just tell right when I pull it through the first time it's very rough on that delicate floss okay I'll check in in a little while um, or a few days and let you see what I've gotten done on this but I'm loving those colors so far they're, they're definitely my jam okay talk to you soon all right, I'm back again, and it is Saturday, August 14th, and I am horrible with dates, and thankfully for Instagram, when I logged on, um, everybody reminded me that it is World Cross Stitch Day today. I can never remember that. So, the question is, do I start something today or not? We'll get to that in a minute, but I do want to show you that I did get a finish this morning. Oops, let me pull this up, got caught on there, and I finished my... Haunted Lantern by Mill Hill Buttons and Beads. So let's just take a look at this from afar and then now we will zoom in and take a look up close. We got the jack-o'-lanterns and the black cats, ghosts. Pretty much everything you can ask for for a Halloween design. thoroughly enjoyed it. It does not have a lot of beads. If you can see, some buttons and beads kits have a lot and some just just don't have as many. So the beading on this really could have taken me probably an evening, but I stretched it out over a few days just because I didn't have a lot of time to work on it um, in the mornings. But um, I did push in the last black stitches, black beads today, and then that button there, the black cat, and um, I was just getting ready to start to take it out of its little, oh, the little holder that I sew on, and um, I thought maybe I would just do that with you. Now, keep in mind, okay, when I stitched this on, I originally stitched on some brown paper that came with it, and there was a flaw in that, and so I just sewed this second piece on. That's why this extra, it's kind of why the, this I have this extra piece of perforated paper around the edge. Normally I wouldn't have that. But I thought I would just unstitch this with you guys and and um, we can see how it looks while it's not in its little uh, extra fabric. And as a refresher I do that so that I can put these in the Q-snap so that I can do two-handed stitching. So let's go ahead and take this out and see what it looks like. Okay, so that took just a couple of minutes. I just pulled the stitches out. Now, the downside to doing to sewing this fabric on around the edges with a sewing machine is that you do get a little bit of some damage to some of the perforated paper along the edge there. It just ruins a little bit of those holes. But I find that if you just sew it on real close to the edge, I mean, it doesn't really do too much damage and it's not real noticeable. Yeah, you can kind of see like where my machine sort of poked it just you know like right there kind of just does a little bit of damage but I put this just in um, one of those frames and I find that none of that shows because you know the frame usually you know comes in about this you know you don't see about the last three or four row rows of holes when you put it in a frame so for me it's worth it to you know do that little extra sewing around the edge and you know to be able to suspend it in the Q snap. So, all right, that is it. I may just go pop this in one of those frames right now. I have those little shadow box frames that I use, and I may do that and uh, show you what that looks like. As I was editing the clip, I realized that I said I was going to show my framed, my finished framed Mill Hill in the uh, shadow box from Michaels, and I had forgot to film that. So I'm right here now adding that in so I can show you how nicely it fits in the frame. I'll try to keep my reflection out of it. It's really hard to show this because no matter how you do it, it's it's gonna wanna get a reflection in there. But I think the point is I was trying to say is that those edges that were kind of um, a little bit uh, scarred from stitching the fabric on completely gets hidden when you put it, put it in a frame. So it's, there's just no way to really 
get a good recording of this with all that reflection. You can see the roof of my deck right there. But, uh, yeah, that is it all finished in its frame. Okay, uh, looks like I have a little bit more time, so I'll go ahead and talk about the other thing that I've been working on. So, last in the last video, I had started the Riolis kit. Let me go grab it. All right, I got myself my, uh, organized here with my Riolis kit that I was working on. It was called Cosmos. You know what? It's actually not called Cosmos, I don't think. I mean, it's called Cosmos because that's what they are, but um, I couldn't find that name anywhere on here. So it's just um, kit number 583. And it doesn't really say in English anywhere that it's actually called Cosmos. But when I bought it, that's what it was called. Okay, so my thoughts on uh, the threads so far when I had gotten started is I was thinking that they, these acrylic wool threads, first of all, these organizers, Dimensions could really take a page out of Riolis' book when it comes to these. These are awesome. I love them. You just unroll, and I find for me that I unroll it like about, you know, unwrap it about seven or eight times, and that's the perfect length of floss for me to double it over and do a loop start. Um, so yeah, I was, when I had first started this, I think in this last clip, I was saying that I felt like the threads were, you know, becoming really sort of worn as I was pulling them through the holes and they were getting kind of frayed. Well, I was reading this on the, I didn't realize this had another side and it said, you know, one of the, the charms is that the embroidery with wool, it says, has a 3D effect. So I'm guessing that they're, ex you know, and it says that yes, it, um, it gives your, your stitches volume and masks imperfections and provides great coverage. Now, I would tend to agree with all of that. So once I accepted the fact that their threads are supposed to kind of fray and get fluffy like that, it's almost like stitching with um, really thin pieces of yarn is kind of how I think of it. And that it's supposed to add the dimension. So once I got over the fact that the threads were being damaged as I was pulling them through the hole, I, you know, thought to myself, okay, that's kind of how it's expected for them to do. So as I've been stitching with this and I went ahead and just used my regular long length of thread like I usually do I didn't to make my lengths any shorter and I have to say I love stitching with these threads now so let's see what I've gotten done so far all right sorry again about the dappled light I'm sitting under a tree let me try and shine this differently there um, so I started on that flower. I was just getting started on it. And then what I ended up doing is I wanted to go over to the corner up here because I sort of like to work up in the corner, you know, the upper left and sort of, you know, kind of stitch like you would read. So um, I went ahead and counted my way up to here very, very carefully and started stitching there. And then now I'm working my way back down this way. So let's zoom in and get a little bit closer look at the threads. And you can see they definitely have a fluff to them. And I really, really like it. I really like stitching with these, so. They just remind me of something. They almost kind of remind me of some vintage embroidery. You know, something I feel like, something that I either my mom had hanging on her wall. I'm gonna have to go to her house and see if I could find it. Um, it was like some embroidery done with, you know, thinner thread. Maybe it was wool. But so far, I'm really liking this. So I'm going to probably continue working on this, but it is World Cross Stitch Day, and I have to decide if I want a new start. Um, yesterday was Friday the 13th, and I that's another date I never can remember to do dark 13 stitching because that's a thing on the 13th of every month. You know, I'm always trying to remember to do something Halloween-ish, something, you know, dark and scary. Um, I never remember to do that, but it was Friday the 13th and I thought, okay, I actually remembered to do some dark 13 stitching on Friday the 13th. So I went ahead and picked this little guy. He's one of three. This one is called Essence. It's a Mill Hill trilogy set. These are the other two. We've got Erie and Ellis and I do own all three of those and I would like to stitch them all. And I went ahead and got started on this for dark 13 stitching on Friday the 13th. So let me quickly show you that. 
Let me take it out of the package and show you what I've got started on that. Okay, just a little bit of the head. Um, this clip is very rushed because I have to go actually right now. Um, so I'm going to end this clip for now and I will tune in a little bit later and let you know if I started something new. I, I need another new start, like I need a hole in the head, but um, it's World Cross Stitch Day. I gotta do something special. So stay tuned and we'll see if I do. And sorry that this was so rushed, but um, I have to go right now and I will see you in the next clip. All right, bye. Okay, I'm finally back again. I'm finding it really hard to find time to record this month. August is just a busy month, so I'm going to do a little quick clip here. It is Monday morning, August 16th. It's back to school week, so I'm going to uh, yeah, just pop in here and give you a quick update before my crazy busy week gets underway. Did a lot of shopping this weekend for back to school, so my younger son, Riley, he's 17 and he starts his junior year today actually he starts back up with his online school and then my older son hunter moves into his dorm room on um, thursday the 19th and then he turns 19 on the 26th so we headed out and did some damage this past weekend at target walmart bed bath beyond and then finished up on amazon and got pretty much i think uh, all things we need to get ready for his dorm. Yeah, it was kind of fun shopping for some stuff for that. Um, I wanted to quickly pop in here and show you that I did purchase an item on Mercari. I've been on a purchasing freeze for most of July just because I really just do not need any kits. I haven't checked on Mercari. That's my little go-to site for finding old kits. Um, it's kind of like, I've mentioned it before, it's kind of like eBay but uh, less popular. And I logged in there the other day because I know I have kind of a balance on there and I was looking to see what my balance was and then when I logged in I quickly saw that somebody was selling this kit right here this older dimensions kit I don't know if this is a kit that's available anymore but I'm guessing it's not and it's called winter hideaway it's just one of the small uh, gold collection petites but look at that. I think that's so cute. Now it looks a lot like the winter cabin that I'm stitching. So as much as I wanted to start this, I was almost going to start this for World Cross Stitching Day because that's the day that I picked it up. Um, because that's the day that it got delivered, I should say. But uh, I chose against it just because it looks very similar to the winter cabin that I'm already stitching. And I should probably finish that one first. So did I start something on World Cross Stitch Day? Yes, I did. And you can probably tell from the outlying box that it's a Lenart. And if you've been watching my channel, you'll know that I recently purchased this one right here. Which looks a lot like a Margolin Baston artwork, but it's not. But it is so fall. So the reason I started this is because I was watching... Uh, Cindy over hi Cindy at Cindy's cross stitch and um, I was watching her latest video and she was stitching a fall piece with pumpkins and I think it had sunflowers on it it was so pretty it was not this kit but it was something similar and it was so pretty when I saw it I thought you know what I need to start that fall kit of mine the Lenart kit so this is what I chose to start for world cross stitch day and Oh yeah, let's look at the colors here first, these beautiful colors. And I have not got much of it done, but this was the little small start I did right there. One of the sunflowers. So let's just go back here again to the picture. So this little piece of thread, can you see right here, that little piece of thread? That's the center, and then I went ahead and counted all the way up to that so the center is probably somewhere like around here and I counted up and I started on that sunflower right up there so I was going to go over and start on this area here which I might do after I do a little bit of the sunflower I think I'll when I get to this roof I'm going to kind of stitch the roof over and get this up and start working down this way like that oh but this part I can't wait to get into that part so pretty 
So a little bit more information about this. And I did talk about it in a previous video, but it's um, called Wheelbarrow and Sunflowers by Carolyn Bacher. And yeah, it's a pretty good size, but not overly huge. So I was really torn. I was, I was torn when I'm deciding to start this because I really want to finish my pumpkins. It's called Pumpkins by Marjolaine Baston. It's also the Lenart kit that I was working on. If you've any, seen any previous videos of mine, I really wanted to finish that before starting this one, but uh, I don't know. I just, the temptation was just too much. Excuse me while I take a sip of coffee. And so it is what it is. So... That's pretty much, I think, all that I have to show. I did do a tiny bit more stitching on my Mill Hill Ghost. Not much, but I will show that probably in the next clip. It's stitching up really quick, so I have a feeling that's going to be a pretty quick finish. But we'll see. I don't think I have a whole lot of time to stitch this week, and I don't know really even the rest of the month how much time I have to stitch because it's things are about to get crazy here, so... But I have about 30 minutes right now to do some stitching, so I'm going to work on this one. Try to maybe finish up that sunflower. And I think that's all there is to say. So I will uh, catch you guys on the next clip. Well, I stitched a little longer than 30 minutes. Because I was bound and determined to get the other two shades of yellow done in my sunflower, which I did. So now I can officially start my day and that's going to start with laundry and probably another cup of coffee good morning stitchers i'm back for the last installment of my august vlog and admittedly it's not august anymore it's september 3rd it's friday the morning it's the morning of friday the september 3rd and i'm just now getting here to film the last part of my august vlog because as i knew it would be august got really busy really quick. So I've got my fall colored cup now because we can do that now that it's September. And I have my coffee already almost done with my second cup for this morning. So let's just get started. Um, okay. I don't remember where I left off. I know that it was a while before we recorded, but the reason why I held off till September 3rd to film this is A, I haven't had a lot of time, and B, I was trying to get a finish for you guys. And I was so close to getting it done that I just couldn't, I didn't want to hold off another month to show you this finish because I worked on it almost completely in, I finished it almost completely in August. So uh, I thought, you know, I'm just going to finish it up. And I got up early this morning and did the last stitches on it. And am happy to present to you one of the three trilogy ghosts from Mill Hill that you saw me start on. And let me turn this over because it looks better on a white background. And here is my finish. Okay, so it's not really doing it justice on here. Now, which one is this? This one is... Okay, let me turn it over again. I forgot. Okay, this is Essence. Now, the other two in the series, as you can see right up there, are Eerie and Ellis. And I do have both of those, and I would like to stitch them. But this one I just uh, started first. And let me zoom in so you can see that adorable lacy pattern and that Oh, look at that little kitty. I just think it's so cute how you can see kind of like the cat is, you know, the ghost is kind of see-through and the cat's behind him. Just super cute. This looks really tedious, but, oh, the, the geese are back. Where are they at? Okay, I had to show you that because I think a year ago this exact same thing happened and I edited it out and everybody said, oh, we wanted to see the geese. So for those of you that wanted to see the geese flying overhead, there you go. Okay, back to this again. So that pattern looks really tedious and 
it actually wasn't. It, it was a, an easy pattern that once I learned it, I didn't even need to follow the pattern. So it was really enjoyable to stitch. So it's got, here, let me get my little pointer so you don't have to look at my horrible nails. Uh, it's got some, what are those called? Smyrna crosses there? And there's actually two different kinds of beads. There's a, like the little crystal petite. Let me see if I can get in there, zoom in a little closer. Uh, well, you can kind of see there's the crystals and then there's the white beads there. And probably the most tedious part of it was just outlining the whole thing with beads, but it stitched up really quick. There's actually not very many cross stitches in this. It's mostly beads. I just think it turned out so cute. I think I almost want to say that this is one of my most favorite Mill Hill finishes to date. I think. It's just so cute. I can't wait to stitch the other two. Yes, and it's actually quite sparkly. If I can just get the sun to capture it just right, you might even be able to see the sparkle. Let's see. Can we, can we see the sparkle in there? Eh, not really. Anyway, trust me, it's very sparkly. Okay, so that is why I held off, and I think it was worth it to show you that adorable finish. Um, beyond that, I haven't done much stitching since the last video. Uh, the only other thing that I worked on, so I didn't touch my Cosmos, and I can't remember what else I started. It just seems like the beginning of August was so long ago. But this was the other one that I was working on, so I'll show you the update because I did get a little bit done on it, too. So, started working on, I think, I think I probably only had a bit of the flower done the last time you looked. So, uh, yeah, I worked on the house here, and this is all just kind of like uh, one, just using one strand of floss. And it's, uh, I thought there might have been half stitches in this back, but it's not. It's full cross stitches. It just only uses one strand. But it's ending up being really pretty and very enjoyable to work on. So I think I'm going to probably work on that. Let me grab it here again. So you can see. So I'm kind of working on just the background in the house there. And then was going to work my way over to this, which is really the good part. Very tempting to head over there now. But so, yes, plans going forward in September is probably to work on this. And the only other plan I have, a loose plan of participating in a stitch along that's being hosted by uh, Fiber Artsy. I'll link her channel below. Um, she's doing a, let's see if I can remember the name, September Spooky Smalls Sow, I think is the name of it. And I would like to participate in that. And technically, since I finished this in September, I could call that a September Spooky Small Sow. But I'm not going to because I stitched it mostly in August, so that's not really fair. I only did the last finishing up of it in, <laughs> in September. But maybe I'll do um, another one of these in September. Or I might pick something out of the Just Cross Stitch Halloween issue because there's a lot of cute small ones in there to work on. So this is going to be a quick update because I really want to get this uploaded. And um, while well, it's still close to August, and I don't think there was anything else to uh, talk about other than let me, put, let me put my stitching here so you have something to look at while I just briefly talk about the fact that. Um, so let's see. It was before my son was getting ready to move into his dorm. Was I was doing the last clip and September, or I mean August 19th was the day he was going to move in and he did. It went completely smooth, went without a hitch. I just... It's just been a whirlwind, though, um, because he had his birthday one week after that on the 26th. He turned 19, so we did a bunch of, you know, the, when he moved into the dorm, I just couldn't believe it all went smooth. He lucked out, seems to have a really good roommate. We haven't met his roommate, but said he was very reserved, which is interesting because my son is about the most reserved person I know. So for him to say that his roommate is reserved is, yeah, that's kind of interesting. I've held it together. I held it together pretty good on that weekend, but since then I've had a few uh, mental breakdowns and 
I miss him terribly, but I'm so fortunate he's happy. He seems to be thriving and all is good. All right, well, on that note, I'm gonna end it there so that I can get this uploaded. And I don't know how much filming I'm gonna do in September. It's been a little challenging lately to get some recording done. So I'm not gonna promise anything, but I will try to do a vlog and, and um, at least try to check in at least a couple more times before the end of the year. We are getting into uh, my favorite time of year, fall and Halloween, and I'm going to enjoy every second of it. So, all right, until I see you again, thank you so much for stopping by and spending a little time with me. Please leave a comment if you feel like chatting. I love to chat back, and I will see you soon.